He was basically insulting me with the, the, the paint thing, the petty stuff, you know? That's a good looking boat. This guy doesn't know Zinc wasn't isolated really until the 1800s. All right, what the are you talking about? Uh, no, they're worth a lot more than that. If you think you can find these on the internet for $1,500, knock yourself out, because it's not going to happen. I've got a Hudson Bay Gorget, made in prior around the 1700s. Hey, Rick. What's up? What the hell's a 4J? <laughs> Chris came to the pawn shop trying to sell his Hudson Bay Gorget. Hudson Bay is one of the oldest companies in the world. I want to try to get 100000 out of it, but... I'll have to see what he offers him. In the shop, Rick and the old man welcomed him and asked Chris what he knew about the gorget he had brought. Made by Hudson Bay, somewhere probably around the 1700s. I don't know a whole lot about it. My dad actually got it. He picked it up at an auction. Do you know what he paid for it? A second mortgage on his house. Okay. Now, Chris didn't know much about the gorget, but Rick knew some stuff about it and its history. These go way back in time. I mean, even the Romans had them. It was to defend against a knife thrust or a sword thrust to your neck. I know the Hudson Bay Company was one of the oldest companies in North America. Of course, Rick wanted to know how much Chris expected to get for that piece, but will that price be acceptable? And how much you want for it? Uh, probably about 100000 You know, I don't see that happening. Why not? Because I think it's worth a lot less. Rick knew what he was talking about and explained to Chris why that piece couldn't possibly cost that much. How much less? Like 99,000 less. I can tell you right now it's not 1700s. Learn, okay? Because you see this weird, this yellow gray patina that's on it? Yeah, okay? Uh, that tells me right away it's nickel silver. And Chris didn't like what he heard. Right around 20% zinc. Zinc wasn't isolated really until the 1800s. All right, what the f are you talking about? Son, I, you're way out of line. Now Rick honestly told him what he thinks and how much he can offer to Chris, but would Chris accept that? Um, I'd offer you a thousand bucks. I don't know what you're smoking, man, but that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna take my stuff and leave. All right, have a nice day. That guy, I think he just thinks I'm some punk kid and wanted to lowball me. I'm disappointed I couldn't make a deal. I would have liked to have made the money. Well, that did not go well. Wow. Oh, a boat. So what do you have here? It's a 1958 Sea Flight Glass Tron. Jimmy pulled up to the pawn shop trying to sell his unique boat. I came down to the pawn shop today to sell my 1958 Glastron Sea Flight. I have another project in mind, and it happens to be another big fin boat. Uh, I'd like to get 10500 for that boat because you couldn't find another boat like that. He also explained some of the boat's history to Rick and Shumley. Uh, this boat was made in 1958 by a fledgling company named Glastron. There's probably only 150 of these boats left. That's neat. It was 1958, and everyone loved the style of the 57 Chevy, so let's come out with the boat that looks like a 57 Chevy. Now, from the moment he saw the boat, Rick was amazed. It is a fantastic boat, and that's a fact. Normally, I don't buy boats. They're money pits. But this thing is cool. It looks just like the 57 Chevy I got for the old man's birthday. It's definitely tempting because it's an iconic look. Rick also knew a thing or two about that kind of boat. In 58, the space race was just starting, and everything had fins. Anything they could make rocket-like was cool at the time. This thing's supersonic? Uh, no, it's not supersonic. Um, this thing probably did 30. It's got 80 horses behind it. Even though Rick loved it, he was aware that boats are hard to sell, especially if they're not in good condition. And he was wondering if this one was. I mean, you got all the original chrome and everything seems to be here. Yeah, this was an affordable family boat. Um, but do you know why? Because it was a little 17-foot boat. No, because it was fiberglass. No more wood boats. Wood boats were moving out. Rick checked out the boat, and he asked Jimmy how much he expected to get for it, and he kind of didn't like what he heard. How much did you want for it? 10-5. Ooh. Um, this is my problem with it. It's like lipstick on a pig. I mean, we have a terrible paint okay. job. It doesn't have the original motor. Okay. Jimmy wasn't sharing Rick's opinion. I realize all the flaws with this boat. The point is just the styling, and can you even find one? Uh, the thing is... Find is... one. Now, even though the boat is cool, we know what Rick wants. 
money. But it's still all about making money, and there's no money here for me. I don't even want to make you an offer. There's too much work that's got to be done for me to make anything. The deal was done without any offers from Rick, and even though they shook hands, Jimmy was not happy with how things ended. Really? Okay. He was basically insulting me with the, the, the paint thing, the petty stuff, you know? That's a good looking boat. This guy doesn't know. What are those? Pole axes. Okay, okay to put these down? Yeah, go ahead and set them over here. <laughs> Where'd you get these? The Renaissance Fair? No, I got them in southern Germany. Davis came to the pawn shop with two really cool medieval pole axes. I've collected medieval weapons for about 20 years. I usually hang them up on the wall in my living room or in my collection room. It's like some people like Monet, some people like Picasso. I like medieval weapons. Corey wondered how old those pole axes were and how Davis was sure they were as old as he said they were. 500 years old. What makes you think they're that old? The way they're made, these are hand forged on an anvil, so they're really light, but they're really strong. My research, this one right here is Austrian and this one's actually Italian. But Corey also knew a thing or two about this medieval weapon. It was a pretty kind of high tech weapon when it came out. I mean, pretty much what you would do is the guy would go rolling by on the horse and you stick that into him and yank him off of it. And he also thought that they were terrific, but the main question was if they were authentic. Corey wanted to know how much Davis would like to get for them if they were the real deal. I need 7,500 each. Have you ever had them looked at or appraised by anybody or? Now the pole axes weren't checked by the professional, but Davis was pretty sure of himself and his knowledge. I've collected medieval weapons for quite some time. I've done my research, so I'm very confident in what they are. Even though Davis was sure the pole axes were authentic, Corey had to call up a professional to take a look. Very nice halberd. Very nice. Thank you. How old do you think that is? Well, uh, about 500 years. Now the conversation between Davis and Craig was going pretty well, or was it? I believe the other one's Italian. Okay, you would be right. This is more ornate, a little more gaudy, if you will. As we would all conclude, were those Polaxes original and as old as dust? Well... So, you're fairly sure they're from the 1500s? Actually, I'm not. Uh, these are halberds, and halberds were used during the 1500s. The wood on these break and are repaired and replaced. This is not original wood. So it's made in the style, but that's not a big deal. The okay. real question is, are the heads real? Craig explained what really concerned him and what could potentially devalue the weapons. The thing that really concerns me about this piece is that the steel is really flimsy. I wouldn't want to be hit by this, but you know, you whack somebody wearing armor with this thing, it's liable to bend or break. Davis, of course, did not like what he heard. This is probably from the Victorian period and is what I call the decorator piece. I disagree. You think it's not original because it's flimsy, but that thing is hand forged and I believe it's original. But Craig explained what he noticed about the pole axes. It does have a foundry marking on it. Uh, the Victorians really didn't worry about foundry markings because that's not the point, okay? They were building something for you to hang up on your wall. The expert gave his conclusion of how much the pole axes are worth and if they are the real deal. This one is, again, not for you. If you wanted to buy this, I'd pay no more than six or $700. If you want one of these, I can get you one for $1,500. Uh, no. Davis, again, thought he knew better. They're worth a lot more than that. If you think you can find these on the internet for $1,500, knock yourself out, because it's not gonna happen. So was Corey still interested in buying them? Craig's not afraid to mix it up a little bit. Sometimes he pisses people off, but he never steers me wrong. And even though they're not as valuable as we originally thought, I'm still interested. He gave an offer to Davis, but even though Craig gave his professional opinion, Davis was convinced the pole axes were worth a lot more. I mean, if I were to make you an offer, I'd make you an offer of around 1500 bucks. Are you talking a piece? <laughs> no, I'm talking total. No, I'm not interested at all. Well, that deal went down the drain pretty fast. You couldn't buy that for $1,500 if you just found it in the ground rusted. So what do you think about these customers? Did the Pawn Stars treat them fairly? Let us know in the comments. And until next time, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to never miss our uploads. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time.